Hello, 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 everybody. All right. Let's see. Thank you all for joining. All right, let me quickly post the... Today is going to be fun. We just want to have some interviews and have some good session with our larger team. This is going to be exciting, folks. Thank you all for joining. Let's give everybody else another five minutes and we will get started. Thank you, everybody. Okay. All right. Let's get started. All right. We're getting live. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, everybody. All right. So today we will be having an interview real quick right. with one of so our team. Let me just add. Thank you, everybody. All right, let's give everybody else two minutes and we just get started. Enough fun. It's going to be some interviews and we will just um, be getting some good pointers, some tips on some of the things we should prepare our mind for. So thank you, thank you, thank you once again. After each one of those, we can feel free. You can chat. We can brainstorm together. If you have questions along the line, just let me know. Um, you can type those questions in the group. We'll keep it as fun as possible. So with me also is Wale on the line. And he has an interview. Hey, Wale, what's up? Good morning, sir. All right, all right. Thanks for joining. Let's give everybody else like a minute. Then we just get started. And I would share a few of those key things that we feel are critical and important in general. Then after that, we can easily um, just dive in real quick. And we do this a lot in our community. It's a give back, a way to kind of support our community in general. If you have interviews coming, we try to accommodate as much as we can. We keep it straight, short, straight to the point, and hopefully as impactful as possible. So. If you can see my screen, um, just give me a thumbs up. Just give me, you know, some icons, some chats, whatever. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Teddy, King King. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Um, give us some thumbs up if you can, if you can see us live. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, cool. Great, great, great. All right, thank you so much. All right, let's go straight to some of those key questions that so this is the specific scenario for this particular role as you can see for this role the responsibility includes helping to do day-to-day -day operation in grc conducting due diligence within cr um, grc the second one talks about working closely with internal stakeholders internal team in GRC in general. The talk talks about possessing technical and audit experience in cloud environments, website security, operational processes in general. Um, the fourth talks about maintaining 
working relationship with technology and business cross-functional team, right? Then the, the last one gets into identifying of gaps, issues, problems, proposing remediation plan within GRC space. That's a big deal for most environment, right? So let's get started and dive into each of the detail. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the specific responsibility identified as per the requirement itself, okay? So let's take the first one. Uplifting and bolstering day-to-day -day operation. And Wally, feel free at any point, if you have follow-up questions, type, stop me, we can get into it. All I did was simulate some of those basic things that I think are key and important in general, right? Now, if somebody asks you and I in an interview that, okay, what is, um, walk me through your resume. Everybody on this call, this is going to be our world, right? They would ask you to walk me through your resume and tell me what you've done. I think it's important to prepare your mind mentally that this is just your opportunity to shine. It's a good avenue for you to showcase your skill set, your knowledge base to your client at any point in time. So always start by saying, well, it depends on the face I am on different projects, or it depends on the time of the year, or it depends on um, what I'm working on at any point in time, right? Because most environments, your task is going to be always changing. This is not like an AP role that you're constantly doing reconciliation of payables or receivables. This is going to be a GRC role because your skill and responsibility is really across the board. Sometimes you're building policies and procedures. Sometimes you're helping with remediation plan. Sometimes you're helping them to benchmark best practices. Sometimes you're doing incident response. You're building policies. So it depends on the time and what you're doing at any point in time, right? That's going to shape what to do really most of the time. So in this case, because it's part of the requirement, we're going to say, yeah, you were part of helping with conducting assessment. And if you remember for all of us on this call, most of us that are part of our program, remember the assessment is really talking about different framework we use to benchmark our security controls. The popular one we can all agree on, we have the NIST framework, we have ISO 27001 framework, we have PCI DSS, we have GDPR, different environments, different guideline frameworks, um, however they want to call it, to help us to benchmark different processes in general, right? So in this case, I need you to tell me that you are part of doing assessment. And don't forget, the assessment is really helping your organization to be at a point that they can, you know, at the minimum, benchmark their self and the current processes to leading practices, right? So let's take the second one. Develop and implement streamlined processes for new an existing product to enhance efficiency and compliance, right? Now, if we say new product or new systems, think about it. A lot of organizations today are going to the cloud, right? So if you are going to the cloud, your risk landscape naturally will change because now you're moving to the cloud, right? It means you are on-prem. Your security posture is going to change at that point in time. So it means it makes sense to, you know, um, definitely understand the nuances and difference of going to the cloud at that point in time. The third one talks about collaborating with cross-functional teams. Now, everybody on this call, at some point, you would work with other team members, right? That would not be part of your team. You might work with the infrastructure team, the audit team, the response team, the network team. And working with them at times simply means you're getting their input you're getting an understanding of their environment and what they do most of the time, right? The other one talks about monitor operational performance metrics and um, to address issues. I'll give an example. So if your previous year compliance to cybersecurity awareness training was 60%, and as part of our task is to remedy to make sure that we can have more increase in compliance for our security awareness program, the expectation is that when we run the program again, we want to see an optic from 60% to probably 70, 80%. That makes more sense for us in general. We can all agree on that at the minimum, right? So that is very important also. Then the other thing is continuously evaluating different innovative tools. 
Now, when we say tools, don't overthink it, ladies and gentlemen. All we're saying is that many times you would have occasions whereby we have instances where you would have new solution brought to your organization that you might have to be part of those doing assessment of those new solutions. Let me give a practical example. A solution might be we need a tool to help us to monitor how vulnerabilities are managed within the environment. So I'm monitoring vulnerability, right? All the potential risk areas. The tool is constantly scanning within our environment. So if that is your role to help them to assess if the tool is capturing all the necessary key points. That might be your role, right, in your organization at that point in time. A lot of us would help your organization to select sometimes the right vendors that fits the solution of your organization also. So just have that in mind that sometimes, yeah, our world is a little bit tricky. You might find yourself being responsible for that too, okay? Just giving you some heads up in general. All right, let's go to the next one. Collaboration with stakeholders. Everybody on this call, we can agree. None of us can work in silo, right? We would work with other key stakeholders. Now, look at the first one. We talk about fostering relationship with not just your internal team members, sometimes with customers, sometimes with your third-party service providers. So that's a big one. Facilitating meeting. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say, yeah, this is the reality. Everybody, at some point, you would have to set up meetings okay and that's why we challenge each other that you know within our ecosystem body of work in general we try to encourage our team be involved in participating in you know um, group work take leadership take ownership be talking use us as a um a fertile ground to speak and to talk and because you would likely facilitate some meetings the beautiful thing about it is it's not a big deal. Many times you're facilitating it. You're just asking questions. You're probing questions. And let me tell you what I think. The smart thing is simple. Let's use the P5 theory. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. All we need to do most of the time is really to just prepare. I mean, and preparation simply means have a list of five questions you intend to have answered. Something as simple as that, okay? Now, look at the other thing. It says, act as a liaison between IT security team, control owners, external auditors. This happens a lot. And when we say liaison between these stakeholders, many times the beautiful thing is that you're just going to be part of coordinating activities to make sure things are done. Sometimes it might be issues identified in previous assessment or audit. Your mandate is to see if they can follow through and get those issues resolved at times, okay? And the final thing here, it says communication, communicating effectively with the stakeholders. The beautiful thing about this is, you know, um, every one of us at some point would have to communicate, right? Because ultimately, we have to find the means in which we relay the information we have in a timely manner accurate as much as possible, contemporaneous as much as possible within any organization. So that's a big one. Now look at the results here. Um, at the end of the day, I would always tell you, challenge everybody on this call, don't overthink a lot of these interviews because people just want you to tell them the issues you deal with and what was the result for you. And if you're on this call, if you've had some interviews, you have some questions you would like to just share, and you know, I'll be happy to address those two real quick. And I will accommodate um, at least 10 more minutes after this drill. You know, feel free to post your questions. I'll try and answer some um, you know, as much as we can. All right, let's go to the next one. Remediation and solution pro proposal. Now, every one of us, let's remember this. Um, it's important. Every one of us would likely be involved in remediation of issues identified, almost guaranteed. Now, the reason I know this is because, think about it, every time there's constantly going to be assessment, audits, um, evaluation done within your organization. And one of the beautiful things is that people just want someone that can help them to follow up and resolve those issues. You'll be surprised when you resume a new role, 
they have issues they've been trying to resolve for the last three, four years in some cases. And guess one of the easy ways to shine. Imagine you being the, you know, ill Mary person that came in and helped them to fix those issues or follow through to get those issues fixed. That is so amazing, really. So think about it from that angle, okay? Um, so all of us would have to think about remediation. So if I'm talking in an interview, I would let them know I was responsible for following up with remediation issues that we've had in the past. At the end of the day, um, following through with the key stakeholders, I was able to reduce the past remediation by 20% or 30%. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might think that is a small number. <laughs> that is quite significant. If you tell me that you resolve my issues by 20-30%, that is 30% less things I have to worry about. Don't forget that, right? That is a big deal. I mean, that is a freaking big deal, to be honest. That's that's huge. So put some numbers, put some values so you could potentially kind of give yourself um, a way to connect with leadership. Because when you say that, I as a director, as a VP, as a manager, immediately can relate with you because that's a big deal, right? That's significant. That's That number is big for me. Even if you tell me 7 10%, that's still significant, right? So that's the way I want us to kind of think about these things. And um, as you interview, think and say, how do I add value at the end of the day? All right. Okay. We're almost done with the questions here. All right. Some other one that is pretty cool, due diligence and compliance, right? Every one of us, it's fair to say, we have to think about how do we provide due diligence, right? and ensure compliance is done, right? And another big one, think about it, ladies and gentlemen, for those of us that are constantly interviewing for like third party risk and due diligence for third party vendors, you know, because at the end of the day, you and I are still liable as an organization, right? Because nobody's going to care that, well, you know, um, you are still liable. That's the reality of it we are still liable, right? So it's very important to still make sure we constantly um, do our due diligence for our third party vendors. And in this case, this talks about PCI, payment card industry. So this is for folks that are constantly processing credit card, right? So for financial institutions or any kind of institution that is processing credit cards, so that, this is significant for them, right? So very important. And what is the general result at the end of the day, right? You want to put some value to say, you know, um, for the fiscal year, we had zero compliance issue or violation from our external auditors. That is big. For those of us that followed the news, if you notice, last two months, I believe, Facebook was fined, I believe, 1.3 billion euro for violation of GDPR, for the privacy laws there, right? So that's a big deal. So think about it that these decisions or inaction can potentially cause very, very significant issues for organizations. So that's a big deal. So just take note of that. Um, the, the, the final one for this particular role, and ladies and gentlemen, we just joined. What I did is we streamlined a role one of our team members is applying for, and we just simulated questions based on that role. If you've not been part of our community, we have a document that is a STAR document, Situation Task Action Result in GRC, pretty good. Um, you can reach out to us and we will share that document with you so that you can just have it for yourself for reference in the future. It's pretty good. All right, let's just finalize this one. Um, process improvement and training. It's fair to say for all of us, one thing you can never go wrong with is security awareness training. You know, um, very, 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 very big deal. You know, um, security awareness training is a big deal because at the end of the day, the question is, no matter how mature that environment is, think about it. The bad actors are constantly finding ways to also still attack you. So it's on you and I. They need to be right 0.0001%. You and I need to be right 100% of the time, all the time, or else it can become a big embarrassment to your organization, right? So it's a big deal. So for us in general, security awareness is a big deal. You want to make sure the training is consistently done. You want to make sure the compliance is tracked. 
by HR most of the time. Now, there's a second layer to it. For top leadership, there should be additional training for your top leadership and your super users. The reason it's important is because guess who the most top targets are in a cyber hack, right? It's going to be your top leadership because they have the power of the pulse. They are constantly being targeted. So it's a big deal for, for, for us as an organization, right? So just something to think about and be ready to always adjust and align as needed at any point in time. All right, cool. And um, let me just quickly get back to the... All right, so that was it about the presentation. For those of us in our community already, you can see we have so many scenario documents and hey, Wally, you know, I know you have this document. If you don't, please ping me one-on-one -on -one so I can send it to you. I can send it to our larger community again if, in case some of you on this call don't have access to it. Um, if you don't have access to this start document, can you um, just type and tell me you don't have access to it so that I can, I can be sure a lot of us don't or we do. And after this call, I'll probably send this document to the larger community. If you are not part of, a, of our community, let me know. We have a WhatsApp group that is pretty um, pretty interesting that we use to track our folks. All right, let me take a few questions, then we will bounce. Somebody said I don't have access. Um, if you don't have access, do me a favor. I'm going to text. Um, let me text the WhatsApp number. Yes, do me a favor. I'm going to text the WhatsApp number. Then I will send you a link one on one to join. Now, a quick Comments, please, please, everybody on this call, be mindful. Skillweed, any of our team will never send you a code or call you for a code. If anybody does that, just report them. They are scam artists, okay? So protect your resources and make sure that you don't fall for those tricks. All right, I just sent you WhatsApp, WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp. All right, so you have WhatsApp. So send me, I just sent a link to you. You can ping us on WhatsApp there. Um, our team will send you the link so you can join that group. It's pretty good. You have access to good stuff. All right. Let me take um, three questions, then we can um, bounce from here and have fun. All right. Let's take the first one. Will the recording be posted? Yes, it will be. Um, this session is live. And um, the beautiful thing, YouTube always uh, keep the recording, so it should be available on Line. Thank you. Somebody said, which GRC rule should we avoid applying to? Ha 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 ha. All right. So let me let me give Teddy a round of applause for that interesting one. All right, Teddy. Okay, that is cool. Okay. Now, this is what I think, Teddy. I think the rule of thumb for us in our community is simple. And I believe genuinely that the smart way to do this is. Look at any role, look at the requirement, the function. If it aligns with what we've taught, what we've done in class, in our program, then apply to it. That's the way I look at it. Irrespective of the title it's positioned as, I would always say, always apply to it. If it aligns with what we've learned in class, in our program, then always apply to it. That's the way I look at it. Okay? All right, let me take another one. Now, somebody said which one should... Okay, okay let me try and... I try to stay away for, from us uh, avoiding any opportunity. The one I would say for now, maybe we should kind of respectfully take, um, you know, stay away for now. Because if it's a false role, then don't touch a role that says um, manager for now. I think that's fair to say, right? Just because if you don't have the foundation, it's hard to be a manager, right? So any leadership role, don't take it. Lead role, use your judgment. Sometimes they might say lead GRC role, and it's probably just a role, a title by name. So always look at the requirement. If it aligns with what we've done, then go for it. That's where I will look at it personally. Okay. All right. Let's see another one. How do you answer this question? Are you currently interviewing with another company? All right. It depends. I will say yes. You know, it's an easy one. I'll say yes. As a matter of fact, if I'm interviewing with, uh, I will call their competitor just to put a subtle, gentle pressure on them. 
So if you are a big four and you tell me, you know, your, your KPMG, are you interviewing for any, with anybody else? I'll say, yeah, I'm interviewing with Deloitte and Ernst and Young. And the reason is just to kind of give them a gentle pressure. Because when they know that, hey, you know, I have other suitors, people want to kind of make move quick. And I can just put a disclaimer and say, yes, I'm interviewing with uh, Ernst and Young and Deloitte. However, you know, I, I really love the culture of KPMG. Kind of to make them feel good that, hey, I'm talking with other guys, but I like you guys, your culture, pretty much. So, yeah, play the game with, with them. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, somebody said, I don't have access. Yes, I just sent the number. Feel free to text um, that number. you get some of our team members that will respond to you um, within 24 hours for sure. Um, somebody said, what's the name of the document? Once you send us the link, we we'll wait for you know a few hours, and once we have more people join that group, then we'll send the document again as a way to kind of you know um, uh, make sure we have more people have access to it. Somebody said, "Can we apply for a senior role?" I would let you determine that based on the job function. Yes, I will let you determine that. Many times I try to make my team stay away from the word like a lead role because sometimes if it's a lead role, the pressure is on you. Now, for some people, I'll make exception. Let's say, for example, you know, you have leadership experience before, you've been a manager before, you have people skill, then yeah, no big deal because all you're doing is coordinating people to make a decision and to do work. If you don't have that experience, I would say don't touch a lead role. You can still apply for senior role, but don't take lead role. Um, you know what? The human capital, the human capacity, of our mind is amazingly elastic. We can do anything we put our mind to. Now, even if you take a senior role, the truth is that it might be stressful for the first one month, two months. But after that, things stabilize. You've stretched your human capacity and your potential, and it becomes normal. So it's not rocket science, right? Okay, let's see. Um, somebody said, can we accept multiple gigs? All right. So make your choice, make your game, make your decision, right? If you decide to apply for multiple roles and you don't have experience, it's almost guaranteed you will not be successful. For your first role, don't do that is my first recommendation because you need to establish yourself and I know many times you might say, yeah, whatever, man, I'll, I'll do what I got to do. You know, I would not be the one sweating it and, you know, being under constant pressure, it's going to be you. So I would recommend don't do it for your first role. Now, over time, your experience, you have all the capacity to do multiple things. Then, hey, I'm your biggest fan. I want you to make money, maximize your earning potential. Why not? But for your first start, don't do it. Now, some of you would ignore the warning, but when you're having a headache in the middle of the night, it's on you. Um, the good thing is every two weeks you see your paycheck, good stuff, maybe that will make you feel good, but it's going to be a lot of pressure. That's the reality. If you you know, if you don't have experience and you go take two jobs, right, makes no sense, I think. So you um, make the best judgment for yourself. All right, let's see another one. Can you talk about some of the tools used in GRC content? Actually, okay, the beautiful thing is that, listen, most of those tools are very similar in nature. Archa, Audit Board, you know, um, there are so many of them out there really right now. Um, as a matter of fact, Skillweed, uh, next program, we are partnering with a big GRC platform that will be a solution provider for our class and we would have our team learn those skills because it will help them to be successful. So, that would happen, and um, look out for that for you know for our folks joining the program. Let's see. So for the tools, I would just say you know once you say one, you can always um, jump on another one. All right, let's say another one. I was not offered a role for being overqualified. <laughs> How do you handle it, boy, Mister Olu? You are you are amazing. You know that you have a good problem. All right, so. The question is, I was not offered, you know what, before we even do that, let me give him a round of applause, man. You know, you, you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> you, you're overqualified. That is awesome, man. You are just awesome. Okay, good. All right, that's a good problem. If your problem is being overqualified. Now, however, let's pause for a second. 
I would recommend, for example, if you're applying for a role in a new tool or a new skill you just acquired, I think it's um, important to streamline your resume to focus on that skill. You know, typically most of the trainings out there, including what we do, we always recommend three to five years. You know, don't go beyond that. Now, if you have your body of work historically, you have so many experiences in the past, you've done so many cool stuff, we respect and love it. At the same time, we want to make sure we streamline ourselves towards the goal of getting a job in GRC, third party, IT risk analyst, or IT or whatever it is that we your goal is. We just streamline ourselves to, to, to that. If you don't do that many times, then the temptation of being overqualified, temptation of being um, overly... Um, and it, so it, it's a good thing, but at the same time, let's play a clever game. Tone down some of those deep experience to get into the field. Later in life, you want to apply for leadership role, you can put all those new profile, all your life profile into it, you know. But just let's play the game simple. So I think just tone down your resume to align with what you're looking for. All right, let's say another one. Somebody said it was for risk and compliance management analyst. Okay, so yeah, we can touch point on that sometime. But tone it down, don't worry, don't stress it. And um, and even if it means customizing your resume to align to certain roles, so be it. Let's say another one. Can the folks that completed the program get access to the new collaboration tool? All right, good question. Now, for folks that have done my program and we have this new tool coming up, um, that's a good point. It's something we can work out. Um, I don't know the details yet. We'll just probably just have like a class dedicated for learning that tool and solution. Of course, very discounted for all our past students, something like that. I don't know yet, but definitely that's a fair point. All right, let's say another one. Um, how would you answer a follow-up question on how did you achieve this? When giving quantitative analysis, for example, achieve the 25 reduction in vendor related security incident. All right, so good point. So if somebody asks me and says, okay, get into details, how did you achieve reduction in you know um, vendor related incident? I, I would just say one, historically in the past, we did not conduct risk assessment for our vendors yearly. For this particular year, we implemented additional layer of risk assessment. I, I'm able to say, you know, every, you know, we did it twice a year this time around because we thought the risk was high at this point because of work from home issues, moving data to the cloud. Those were big concerns. So for this particular year, we did it. We did risk assessment twice and we sent questionnaires to our vendors. We reviewed the questionnaires. We had follow-up questions with, with the vendors. So I kind of broke it down to let them know, yes, you know, um, yes, we reduced, we got to 25% milestone by almost overkill, just doing a lot of risk assessment to evaluate our risk and mitigate those risks also. So that could be a follow-up. All right. Hope that was helpful, Larry. All right, I'll take one more question and I'll let you all get back to work. Let's take the final question. Final question. All right, final question. Somebody said, can we say we didn't have a, a um, we didn't have a chain management process? All right, I love that, I love that. Okay, that is a possibility. And uh, remember again, every environment, that's a big deal. There should be effective chain management process, ideally, right? If that is missing, that is a gap. So we can all agree on that, right? So I will say, it's um understand the context you're telling me about change management process right so that i can appreciate that comment so if the context makes sense then that makes sense if it does not so make sure you tie it together to understand what am i tying to change management in this case am i saying the change management implementation has made it better for me you know that could be so think about what exactly the change management bring to the table to reduce the risk. All right, let's take one final one. This is from Queen OBTV. All right, lovely. Um, they said, market is low, how true is that? I like that. Now, all of us can agree on one thing. 
you know, the global economy, there's a lot of um, speculation, there's a lot of concern, potential recession, potential issues, high interest rates, um, commercial real estate issues. So, so many things out there that can make us worry. I agree with you. Now, are we going to stop applying because of all those issues? No. Are we going to pack shop and say we are not upskilling, developing ourselves because of those issues? No. Are we going to, rather I think it's a time to upskill, it's a time to even um, keep learning more because you and I know, as sure as everyone and all, the economy is coming back, right? Um, and it will get better. Now, it's on you and I to just keep upskilling, keep learning. And you're right, um, January, February, March was insane. Hiring was crazy. You know, weekly within our community, we're getting like four or five offers every week. Crazy. The last month has not been as crazy as January, February, March, which is all over the world, right? A lot of people are just taking time. They have cash reserve, but people are just mindful of spending. And that is understandable. Even families are more mindful of spending. It's understandable, right? Until the um, coast is clear, people feel more confident and they will start spending. But while this is going on, I think it's a smart time to upskill. Just keep learning, get yourself ready, and be aggressively applying. Last week, we still had three people get an offer within our community, right? So it's hard for me to say um, things are not happening, right? So keep applying. I challenge you also, don't get distracted. Don't fall for the naysayers. You don't care about what people are saying. You only care about yourself, your focus. Keep applying. Negative energy you don't have time for. Strictly positive energy. Keep pushing yourself. Now, one thing I'll tell you, remember, because in our community, we apply a lot. When you're done with our program, we recommend keep applying a lot. With a lot of application comes one thing. Guess what it is? It means a lot of rejection will come too. Some of them are automated tools that will just, they've not spoken with you. They'll just say, oh, sorry, we reject your number, Baba. Don't stress it at all. Don't sweat it, you know, just keep applying. We only need one job, all right? And you're just a job, a way to change the story. So don't stress it, just keep pushing, put the work, put the time, and I wish you Godspeed. Yeah, somebody asked me um, the upcoming class. So we have a class coming up in July 29th in the next three weeks or so. I also send the link there for those of us that want to get into the details. And we'll have some information session probably from next week, so you can invite people. Remember, again, we would never call you to send a Zoom call. Drop your ID. Those are us. We don't do that here. Okay? I wish you all the best. Wally, I can't wait for your good story and your success story. Thank you, everybody, and Godspeed. You all are awesome. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. All right, that's all we got for today. Thank you, everybody. Indulge us every now and then. We will always, um, you know, just give you short notice and we jump on live sessions like this. When you have the time, just join us. If you don't have the time, that's okay. We understand. Um, but we, we will do that a lot going forward. Thank you, everybody. God bless.